the retail side was all gifty stuff, china and luggage and handbags and jewellery and fancy goods in China. The first floor was a, a toy showroom which was much bigger than anything else in town. It used to be windows the toy shop. And the stairs were like these here, but the, you were queuing up and queuing down uh, both ways and the place was just just absolutely packed out. Where we're standing today is uh, 102 Abbey Road, which was formerly known as Oxford Chambers. It's one of the seven buildings involved with the Townscape Heritage Initiative. The main focus for the Heritage Lottery Funding is the restoration and maintenance of the existing Victorian buildings in Abbey Road. Barrow has a huge amount of historic buildings that are incredibly good quality and you sort of anticipate how exciting it's going to be when the building comes back into life. We're employed by Barrow Borough Council to uh, renovate a Grade 2 listed building on the main road into Barrow in Furness. The initial brief it was to pull the shell of the building back to being complete, which we've done. We've been working closely with the architects and heritage to ensure that as much of the existing buildings were saved. Well, the features in the shell were the gable wall and the sign, which was a bonus. Some of the signs weren't known to us when we started the project. But most importantly, I would say the, the detailing of the brickwork and the stone on the front facade which is as high quality as I think you'll find anywhere. I think I was looking this morning, it was 14 different disciplines that have been involved to get from um, the shell of the building when we purchased it, even to get to this stage. It's nearly always down to the cost that's allowed, not only the, the materials that you need to buy, but the trades just have drifted away. We're losing the techniques that are used in the building and restoration projects and the funding that's being provided will ensure that the techniques can be passed on to younger tradesmen and then that will continue on restoring the building. Certainly the stonework um, and the detailing in the stonework that needed repairing and uh, maintaining and restoring. We've just been replacing the string castle on the bottom of the building. We can't knock out all the stones at once because the, the front of the building might drop down. So we knock out each individual stone to a depth that our stone can fit into. And they'll measure each stone individually, take the template back up to Carlisle, and then using the template, they'll draw onto the stone and then carve the stone into the shape that's needed. Once we've got the stone in, we'll ram it with lime, hydraulic lime, which is the original product that they used to use on these buildings. We use a string line to get it straight all the way across. However, with this building, you might notice it's actually, it's actually heaved at one end and it's moved. So we'll use the string line as, as best we can through the middle and at the end we just sort of follow the building. But with that string course, it had a couple of mouldings on underneath. It's got a drip underneath, so any water coming over drips down, doesn't go back into the building. The banker masons address all that by hand. It's unusual in today's sort of building industry to be working on a building of this quality and I think everyone seems to rise to the challenge. It refurbishments are nicer because when you take it apart you start to see how it's put together. You're always coming up against little problems on existing buildings, trying to resolve those issues to make the job interesting. One of the biggest challenges for this particular building is related to the gable wall that faces out into the car park. There was quite a lot of concern that um, well, the building could collapse and fall down, also we had to bring in a specialist company to tie the wall back to the existing structure. Certainly the scaffolding that we had outside was also playing a role in holding the structure up, if you like, and it was an interesting moment when we had to take all the scaffolding down and the, the building's still standing. It takes hard work and a lot of thought as well. You know, you have to think about a refurbishment of an old building. You've got to go inside and look at the structure. I like it when you start taking the beams out. You know, I like the beams, I like seeing the old woodwork and the old tiles and things like that when you come across them and you lift up lino and then see the original floors, the original tiles. That's what I like, seeing the old building underneath. The quarry, the traditional quarry tiling has a fantastic pattern which we're working on with a specialist to bring back to life again. Uh, but also there's a, another unusual feature, it's called the smoker's lounge. The, uh, the sign on the front of the building is a um, cigar depot, which sort of gives the idea that smoking was quite uh, prevalent in the building, and they had a room specially 
assigned for it, which has a roof lantern. So in itself, it's a, a unique and a very interesting feature. And in fact, that's also backed up with the sign on the side of the building, which says it was tobacconist. So I think that was or one of the main uses of the building in the past. You find some really interesting stuff. Little books, little chalkboards from the school in 1860s, you know, and where they've all done the working out. Even just old cigarette packets that the old builders have left on the beams, you know, when they've gone. It, yeah, it's nice. It's very nice. When I drive here in the morning, I come down Emlyn Street there. A good memory was looking up at the building and seeing this elevation complete with a render and conservatory. And I think it really stands out. It's a big improvement. It's really nice to work on, on heritage projects and old buildings because uh, you're restoring them to what they used to look like. You learn a, a bit of history about the buildings as you're going along. It's important, yeah, because especially in an old town, it, you, you want to keep the buildings. You're not just walking down into glass and steel. You're looking at your history and once you can see it, everyone starts to learn about it. It's good. These buildings just have a, such a, a standout quality. Men working on site have said that passers-by there's been numerous passers-by congratulating them on the quality of the sign and the quality of the building as it stands today. Everybody sees it, they all say something, people are stopping taking pictures of it, they all like it. The favourite part of the development is really the front elevation and the view from the train station is, is quite stunning really. Eventually over time that 104 and 102 almost if you like will become the one building and uh, all the space will be utilised. That is the next step for the project to secure funding to finish the internal refurbishment. Barrow has, I would say, an unusually high amount of very high quality brick buildings mostly. It, for, for the quality to disappear and then for it to come back, to be brought back to life, I'm sure it will lift the spirits, I suppose, of the people who remember it from the heyday. Because you know that you've done your bit to save, to save a building, it's satisfying. It is. And a number of buildings have been demolished in the past where it's been quite controversial and there is a lot of potential in Barrow to continue to develop it and utilising its existing Victorian buildings and maintaining the heritage is a very good thing. When we look at what the council funded up to now, it is over um, half a million pounds and if it was a private developer to spend that money on this building of this age, it would take so long to recover the actual outlay and the cost and that's where the council needs to step in with either uh, the landlord or charity organisations to try and secure the funding to maintain the building for the future. It's strange how whole town centres and retail can move from what was this end of Dollar Road, which is very much the, the busy part. I so say we were like a family, Coops, Winders, Bill Wilkins, the bathroom place, and then the builder's yard next to it, the evening mail. It was, it was, it was a good place to work. I could tell you a lot of tales, but no, they're not for anybody else's ears. <laughs>